Hello there. So my quick and dirty tracked conveyor belt worked pretty well until the slats all fell off kind of immediately. Biltec has a lot more grip than I remember, but the biggest issue with the tape on the back design as opposed to the front is that the forces of part ejection, the sky coming over the roller, are actively working to destroy your belt. Sure, improvements could be made. I thought about printing a uh, TPU border around it to hold the slats better. But you can't get around the fact that even gravity is trying to peel your treads off the track. It'd be much better to have a smooth surface on the outside as opposed to the inside. With parts bending on the inside. You could do this with straight up flat track. These were 3D printed quickly. And you can see their trapezoids. So they fold flat even though the top is perfectly smooth. It's worth noting that the angle is based on the drive rollers. My drive rollers have five sides, which I only did because the fewer sides you have, the thinner your overall belt thickness. You could make these rollers quite large and then the angle between each tread would be fairly small. Yeah, you can imagine them rolling around something like a coffee can. And while your bed would be then be, you know, a good foot thick, you wouldn't need to cut the belt treads very much. Now, I thought about ways to set up cutting the bevels in with a router table or a couple of wood planes arranged in a V shape. Surprised how well this works. Getting some good curl. I also gotta keep an eye on which tread I'm ruining. Should probably write something on this one. But this isn't the kind of YouTube channel that builds crazy things for views. What I really want is for you guys to build and experiment with this idea, and let's be real, the easier it is to do, the more of you are going to do it. So instead of beveling each of my 40 treads, I was thinking, what if we just put a gap in between them? How far would we have to space those out? Just some quick math. I did this all by hand because it really is the easiest way to figure out. Figuring out my angle. Oops. Yeah, shared sides. Now you do notice we'd need new rollers for this because the inside is now smaller than the 30 millimeter outside if we were to shave all down. But here we can imagine having a continuous surface on the outside and then just going in that gap. Gap size is up by flat by a few millimeter. Here is the equation for if it's a triangle. About three, five, two, six, seven. If you're consuming a perfectly straight line, if you assume that it's going to be a perfect circle, then it's about three point eight. Basically, the radius of the circle around the rim. But so we split the difference, and I made these up. Quite basic little spacer plates. I made them linked together, so it'd be easy to pull up the whole tread. Made up a quick test article using the existing drive rollers. Actually, I did just print new drive rollers. And, uh, yeah, with very little effort. Now, you are going to have issues of what's the print surface going to look like in between these, but if we cover it with a relatively stiff surface, I don't think it'll be that big of a deal. We'll find out. And more importantly, your top surface will be fully continuous, so you could experiment with just different surfaces, and all you really need is the jig to wrap things around. Anyways, let's get started, and uh, yeah, we'll see how she performs.
24 hours cure time. Patience is a virtue. Not quite 24 hours later, but got pretty good adhesion on the belt. Pretty good movement. Pick up the bed. Not bad at all. Well pleased. Getting good evasion, good luck. Let's get the belt on the printer. See how it works. So you may notice I turned the printer around. So I'm very certain that we're going to need to pull the belt since it's so flexible now pulling it and ejecting the parts on this side instead. Kind of just a thought I had. Hopefully it pans out. With a little extra tension on the belt, we do have still quite a bit of dangle. It's not exactly tight, barely compressing the springs. Ah, uh, there's no gap. Yes, that is going to cause problems. I didn't make a gap on the joint, so that's why it gets stuck on the joint. We learned about gaps. They are important. We need to redo the joint. We'll be in business. So this is how you should do it in the first place. Place your bed spacers on first, lock your bed into it, then tape the gap. Just in case you're wondering how much of this I practiced beforehand, All right, I'm going to feed the printer a new config so the belt runs in the opposite direction. Oh. Running RepRap firmware on here so I can actually just go look up the right G code and I'll type it in manually. Good enough for now. Then we'll start some prints. Get it running. Did you set up with a nice, uh, Time lapse while well, this guy's done pre probing the bed.
So, check out the parts. Everything came out well, came off clean. They did all eject off the uh, wrong side of the belt. Luckily there was no jams. I was really worried that the bottoms of these slats would catch the edge of the bed, the heated bed in there, and snap off, but that didn't happen. This, however, working beautifully. Really no idea why it's going backwards. I mean, I told it to go the right way. I think I might have told it to go the right way twice. It's okay. But, full load of printing. Nothing wrong with the seam. No detached slats. And the bed is maintaining its flatness. Except for right at the very front, where I have a little lip to help it roll better. It's going the right direction now, just not while it's printing. All right, then. Anyways, thanks for watching. Happy printing, and uh, this works quite well.